center line string. I was reestablished level in the bow with my platform that will span the, from gunnel to gunnel to support the, uh, the forefoot uh, level. I've got it tied down in line. I put in a check line here, check pencil bob, to make certain that the boat is square to what I had when I installed the uh, centerboard trunk. Now we'll cut away to the plumb bob that I added on the uh, mass partner up here and we'll go to see what I'm going to do with it next. On all my boats I, I make up a, a cup that will uh, support the base of the mast uh, when I'm out sailing. And what I'm trying to do now with my pencil bob centered through the hole in the uh, uh, mass partner here lined up horizontally and laterally, I found the spot on the bottom which is the center of the boat as it is leveled out. So, and I know I, I, I'm pretty close on fore and aft level. I know I'm dead on side to side. Fore and aft there's a little bit of fudge factor there until I actually get the prototype in the water, but I'm pretty sure I have it set up on the lines from when I did my uh, my tank test, so I'm pretty confident I'm close. Uh, if you were doubtful, then you might make this piece a little longer and then put in some uh, uh, more holes and then just screw it in. With this one, I put in a brass insert that is bolted through with a, a quarter-inch stainless steel bolt. So now that I know where my my center line is. I add four and a half and side to side tick marks in order to line up with the tick marks that I have on the side of the uh, mass base plate. Now this I'll just, and I added this to keep the, uh, the tape, to keep the uh, gel magic. I haven't decided whether I'm going to use gel magic or easy fill it to butter this up and then press it in place. But I have all my lines established and so that's all I'm looking for at the moment. So we'll go ahead. I'm going to do this, the actual buttering up later after I've done some sanding. Okay, I've got a coat of epoxy on the rails now. I usually try to put one coat on and then uh, later on put on a couple uh, coats of uh, varnish. Uh, but I'll wait until after I get the boat painted and I used it a little bit and then either for myself or for a resale then I'll go ahead and varnish the rails. Right now I just wanted to put some epoxy on it just to give it some strength. Uh, one thing I found, I changed my method just a little bit this time. Uh, I only made little tiny amounts of epoxy as I went along. I think it was like half an ounce of part A and a quarter of an ounce of part B. So in one of those little cups it was just just a fraction. Uh, I find or I found when I was doing the uh, taping inside, I even cut back on that, that the brush my toothbrush I was using and the epoxy in the container, even though it was only like about an ounce and a half, uh, I wasn't getting at it quick enough on some spots and so it was thickening up on me. And that's one of the things you don't want to do when you're doing the taping or anything fine. Uh, you want it to stay thin and running while you're putting it on. So that's why I went to, uh, especially today, it's a lot warmer than normal. So uh, that is a negative factor too. So when you're doing something delicate like this, make small amounts of epoxy. I found too that between, uh, while I was mixing one, I would put my toothbrush into a container of vinegar just to clean out the brush because if you doesn't help you if you uh, go to smaller epoxy uh, batches if your brush starts getting crusty and thick. It's, it just doesn't work. So clean your brush between coatings, but between little mixes, keep them small, and then roll it out. Uh, look for runs, come back you know, a few minutes later, and then look under the gunnels, inside and out, and look for those telltale epoxy runs that come back and sneak up and bite you on the butt. Uh, I'm going to uh, reset, I'm going to show you some, uh, uh, I'm going to redo a video I took earlier on the, the taping process, and uh, let me put this away and get cleaned up, and then uh, We'll do that. One of the things I told myself when I did this boat that I would wait and put on the longitudinal tape until after I had done uh, uh, other taping inside. I wanted those to be the last thing so they would cover up some of the mistakes or some of the little ugly spots that may develop in the corners. 
Uh, I kind of rushed it because I was busy trying to get this thing done. I have a whole fleet of boats uh, designed that I've got to build a prototype on, so I was hurrying a little bit along. But one thing I would do on your boat, or any time you build a boat, if you're going to tape the, uh, the seams, is do all the verticals, all the little complicated stuff in the, uh, the corners and around the edges. Do those first, and then come back. <laughs> I got some wet epoxy in there. Uh, come back then and do the long laterals on the seat tops or anything along the edge. Put them in blast uh, where they bend around the, the 90 part. Uh, it's, easy, it's easy to sand them in and then put a coat of epoxy on them to smooth them out. They'll look better. But I don't feel too bad with uh, doing this. Uh, it came out pretty good. The other thing you want to remember is not to get too far away from the boat when you're uh, doing this because you want to come back on any bad spots. Uh, on the corner here, the tape came out and was looking kind of ugly on uh, several spots. Uh, I've done things in the past where I'll put masking tape underneath to form a curve and then I'll cut back to it and then remove the tape while the epoxy is still green. It's tacking up, it's kind of firm to the hull, but it's still removable. The uh, uh, epoxy is set up enough that you can use a Zacto knife on it and cut it along and it's not going to rip it up off what you just laid down. So, uh, I came back later, even though I didn't have the tape down, uh, I'll show you what I'm doing when we do the bottom, uh, when I'm talking about the tape part. But I came back with my Zacto knife and just cut in a nice arc through the two pieces of uh, glass tape that had been laid down and then pulled up the excess that I wanted to remove. So now I'm left with a nice radius uh, it's consistent pretty much around the boat uh, on both sides and in most corners, but as I've told you before, uh, I'm a firm believer in the five foot rule. It's a boat to be enjoyed. It's not furniture. It's not a coffee table for your living room. It's to be used. Don't get so worked up on the perfection of the boat that you lose interest. Uh, don't think that you're only going to build one boat. If you build one boat, you're going to build lots of them because it's just too damn much fun. Uh, so all I've got, I've got everything done. Is everything is all sanded down, um, and uh, every all the dry spots that I had on some bulkheads uh, are completely coated. So now I'll paint it. Uh, okay, as you can see, I've got the inside of the hull painted. Uh, I've got three coats of System 3's uh, uh, marine enamel on it, and uh, this was their uh, uh, Camino. Uh, no, not Camino uh, white, uh, Bainbridge white, which is basically a light gray color. And I find that the light grays uh, out in a bright sunshine are a lot easier on your eyes than, than uh, white paint is. So, uh, and, it, and it contrasts well with uh, the last fall I did was blue. And this one, I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to make it uh, white or some sort of pea green, maybe like this. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but uh, tomorrow I'm going to flip it over. Okay, I've got her coming down now. Roll. Now I can start working on the bottom. So we'll start on not on the uh, the bottom on the next video. So uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.